post-game show on a night that was billed as a heavyweight battle. The Rangers are victimized by too many haymakers. 6-3 the final. The Hurricanes outslugged the Rangers in Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome inside the Delta MSG studios, everyone. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valaket. On a night like this, Henrik, how quickly are you up in the head coach's face saying, burn that tape? <laughs> <laughs> well, I give them five minutes. They need to talk to the media first, and then you get changed, to go on yeah. the bus, and, and you start thinking about tomorrow pretty quickly. And I, I love the way they responded in the third. Mm -hmm. That was a great effort by the team. They came back, skated more, and more intensity. Uh, got a little in interesting in, in the end until they scored the sixth goal there, but uh, that's what we were looking for to see, you know, the, a better effort in the third to build something for tomorrow's game. I think that maybe they knew this was a possibility, and that's why you don't start Igor Shosturkin in this game. You put Georgiev in because you can hope for a steal. You hope your backup steals it, and then you go home against Arizona, who's an inferior opponent. You've got your starting goalie rested. It's a bit of a trap game sometimes. That's the way coaches look at it, to come home and play Arizona. But now you've got your starter tomorrow. You split the weekend. You got two out of four possible points. Yeah, you understand you were overwhelmed in Carolina, but overall, look, it, the weekend is a two-point weekend instead of a four, and then you move on to the next game that's on Monday. Yeah. So, you know, that's NHL life. This season's going to go pretty quick here. After we get past February, it's going to be four games a week. Some of these are going to happen. Yeah. We talked before the game about how these two teams were so similar in getting to the point they were at within two points of each other in the Metro Division. But what we saw, especially in the first period plus, was the Hurricanes establishing and exerting themselves. And they got out to a 3 nothing lead before the Rangers had a response. That response came six and a half minutes into the second period, and it was on the power play where Mika Zibanejad gave some life. Yeah, he's doing what he has to do, and he's providing offense, and he's doing it from that spot in the circle that he's sort of gotten back to. Now, Panarin didn't relinquish it. He kind of took it from him now, and you saw it here last week in Philadelphia where the team gets set up, and Panarin, you can see how he gets himself to the blue line where it meets the boards, and now he's playing in that Fox space, giving it to Fox. Now it opens up that line here for Zibanejad to get that on his inside left skate, and then he drops down into it. And watch the flex on the stick here. We saw this last week, and he's firing it. There were shots of him in practice this week, seemingly putting it through the net. Same idea here in Carolina. Everybody presses hard. It's, it's almost a lose on purpose off of the draw. And everybody, again, get into your spots quickly. Panarin's up top again. That's the real strength of the power play. They've got different looks. Right now, they're going to stick with this one. It's another game where they get a power play goal. Mika's lined up for it. Inside skate, down on one knee, and again, a bomb. No chance there. I mean, those are, you know it. Yeah, and it's a really smart play putting Panarin all the way out because it's going to be very hard for the PK to recover and, and try to block Mika's shot. And you saw in both situations where he's kind of wide open, yep. has a clear shot. And it only happens because Brad is all the way out, almost touching the boards and kind of spread the PK team out a little bit. So smart play. They probably are going to continue to use this one a little bit because it seems to be working really well. If you know it's coming, Hank, can it, can it still most of the time not be stopped? Don't give Hank PTSD from a bunch of Exactly. That's, that's what I had in mind when I was going to ask you. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you know it's coming, but it's still going to be hard to stop yeah. it. And the way Mika is playing, his confidence right now, the timing is everything when you hit a one-timer. And today, the pass was pretty hard, but his timing is perfect. He even had to turn his body and angle his skates a perfect way to, to hit that shot. And, uh, you know, when he's feeling it, he is a top guy in the league and uh, they're cashing in on it right now. It, it's fun to watch. 15th of the year for Zibanejad. Kreider and Panarin, the assist. It was 3-1 at that point. P Panarin was robbed on a half-empty net by Frederick Anderson soon after that. And really from that point to the end of the second period, mm -hmm. it was Carolina. And they then further exerted themselves and turned this 3-1 lead into a 5-1. What did they do that just so overwhelmed the Rangers? That's, that's the word to use. It's overwhelming because it really fatigues you out when you look at hockey as a game and it's, it's an odd tactic, but you relinquish possession to get it back yourself. And this is their game. They put it into space, they go get it themselves, and they go to work. 
You can ask any hockey player. It's ten times harder to defend than be on offense. And I think the Rangers got tired in this game. Watch how slow here Lindgren gets back to this puck. You know, if he hasn't been beaten down several shifts in a row, he gets back there quicker. He has more options. Instead, he gets hemmed in. Here's another one. You seem to think the Rangers got plenty of time here, but they flush hard with two, and there's pressure at the blue line. And you watch who gets the puck back. Inevitably, in the neutral zone, it's Carolina once again. And they really impose their game on you. And they are what a coach would refer to as a punt and hunt hockey team. They get it there, they get it themselves, or they get it for their teammates, and they're working you over. And you're trying to do the same thing, but they stop you, they get possession again. It ultimately leads to a goal, but that's a tough team to play against, guys. They're all in shape. Their top players are in terrific shape. And the reason why they look so fast, too, they're not holding on to the puck. They move the puck quickly. Mm -hmm. They shoot it or they pass it, and that's why they look so fast. It's not like they can skate faster than other teams, but the way they move the puck, and it's almost like they have a rule, a one-second rule. Don't <laughs> hold on to the puck more than a second, but it makes them look so fast, and it's hard to defend. So you're going to play them three more times in the regular season season and then who knows the way the playoff situation is going to break down you might see them again in the postseason what do you learn from tonight Hank that maybe you file away for future use well if you play them again uh, we talked about after the first you have to play them physical just to slow them down and, and make sure they're not getting to every loose puck mm -hmm. and then your desperation level needs to be extremely high you need to try to match their level mm -hmm. and that that's a huge part of their game their desperation of getting to every puck so it, it starts with a mindset going into a game like this you need to be ready for a war and, and, and a high speed game I think when the Rangers look at the video from this game John they're gonna say to themselves we have to get back to pucks quicker those first three steps when it gets airborne over your head if you're a defenseman you're not looking to try and get it up here you are turn and go and the more time and the quicker you get there the more options you're gonna have with a little more space but I thought the Rangers were slow getting back a few times where there has to be high-level urgency to buy yourself some precious time and space. Desperation-level urgency, maybe words that we saw the Rangers employ in the third period. Granted, Carolina might have taken the foot off the gas a little bit up four, but the Rangers made somewhat of a game of it in the yeah. third period with two goals. They did, and that was, look, that's been the team, right? They've been coming back all season, whether it's after losses or coming back in games. So, you know, you're proud of this group. You know what they're made of. They didn't quit. Uh, they didn't quit. They kept going, and they were trying to push the pace in the third period. Kreider is on the power play again. Might be the most underrated scorer in the How league right now. him by himself? I, 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 I get surprised. <laughs> back, Still. back to the Ovechkin thing, right? We, like, we know where he's going to be. I know. <laughs> one of the best in front of the net, and you leave him by himself. I mean, I don't How'd get How'd you it. like to be a defenseman when that I happens? don't get it. <laughs> where's the scouting? Yeah, where's the scouting? <laughs> no, but is, is enough people around the league talking about Kreider, the goal scorer? Yeah. He just keeps climbing the list, and he's not going anywhere. And, you know, look, he's been a big component for the reason why this team's had so much success in the first 40. Mm -hmm. Now 26 goals for Chris Kreider has never reached that 30 goal plateau. Inching closer, now only four away, and we've only played half the number of games this season. Not enough in the end, though. Rangers lose at 6-3 the final in Carolina. We've got plenty more to come on the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. Reaction from Raleigh. We'll hear from the head coach as well, Gerard Gallant, and more from these guys as we continue. Rangers lose at 6-3 in Carolina. Back on the ice tomorrow night. We'll talk about it and plenty more when we come back.